The average person is determined to maximize their salary by finding deals and discounts. But corporations are well aware of this tactic and create products to intentionally confuse and overcharge their customers. From underfilled chip bags to overhyped precious stones, the world is full of scams. Today, we're looking at 15 industries that actually rip you off. Diamonds are the stones most closely associated with wealth and prosperity. Most people have the perception that diamonds have been an integral part of human culture for millennia, but it turns out they are just the result of a century-old marketing scheme. The De Beers Corporation was founded in 1888 with mining operations in Canada, South Africa, Namibia and Botswana. Before this moment, the concept of exchanging engagement rings wasn't even a common custom in most of the world. But after a 19 1938 ad campaign spearheaded by De Beers, Americans and Europeans began to embrace the tradition. But not only is this ritual contrived, De Beers and other diamond distributors intentionally restrict the release of their stock to create the illusion of scarcity. The fact is, diamonds are an extremely common mineral. Were the full supply released to the public, their price would plummet. But De Beers and their ilk stockpile these precious stones in order to rip off the public. There's nothing quite like the feeling of pure, ice-cold hydration. Some of us get our water for free from the tap, but the rest pay for it, at the cost of roughly $100 billion a year. And the number of people getting their water exclusively in bottled form is growing at a rate of 10% a year. The first issue is that bottled water is 300 times more expensive than tap water. And then there's the fact that most of the biggest brands, including Aquafina and Nestle Pure Life, are actually filled from the tap as well. In fact, a recent report found that almost half of all bottled water is actually derived from the tap, meaning that they are upcharging customers 30,000% for the same product. Add to this the horrific environmental impact of millions of tons of plastic dumped into landfills and bottled water is easily one of the biggest corporate rip-offs in history. It comes as no surprise that the average person has a minuscule chance of winning the lottery. The chances of winning a top prize in the average lottery are almost 68 million to one. But in some cases, there is literally no chance that people can win. That's because most lotteries continue to sell tickets to unknowing customers, even after the price has already been distributed. And then there's the quick pick tickets sold through Powerball lotteries. These tickets are intentionally printed without the winning numbers, so you only stand a chance of winning if you choose your own numbers. Experts advise that the average person would have better luck placing their money on any random stock or bond. The chances of this investment appreciating are millions of times more likely than on a lotto ticket. It's no secret that sites like Monster and Career Builder are not effective for finding a high-quality long-term job. Most of the best jobs never even make their way to job boards, but it turns out the scam goes even further. Most of these companies will sell your information in order to turn a profit, even if you never find a job in the process. This can lead to more serious scams. For example, many users will receive emails which reference personal information obtained from these job sites. They will then offer the user a job only to scam them into transferring money to pay for a background check or training. Though they can seem tantalizing to the unemployed, most job sites are actually a recipe for disaster. Consumers hate all kinds of fees, but the idea of being charged to access your own money in the form of ATM fees can elevate the frustration to a new level. But consumers learnt in 2016 that the ATM fees charged by many big banks are not merely annoying, but that they violate antitrust laws. It's hard to tell just how much ATM operators may have overcharged everyday consumers for accessing their money over the years. The average ATM fee hits a new record high each time it's measured. The latest bank rate survey found that the average customer using an out-of-network ATM will pay a total of $4.57 in fees, with an average of $2.90 going to the ATM owner and another $1.67 going to the customer's own bank. In many cases, the consumer is only taking out $50 or less, meaning they are paying a roughly 10% fee just for the service of accessing their own money. 
Most people already know that the American higher education system is needlessly expensive. U.S. universities cost more than 500% more than the average college elsewhere on Earth, even including prestigious names like Cambridge and the Sorbonne. Today, over 44 million Americans hold a total of $1.4 trillion in student debt. But this debt doesn't just come from egregious tuition and fees. A huge percentage results from grossly overpriced textbooks. Oftentimes, textbooks cost hundreds of dollars and colleges explicitly prohibit the purchase of used textbooks. If they do allow used textbooks, classes often require the purchase of a one-time use code, which leads to supplementary materials, most of which are never actually used. And in even more devious cases, professors will assign their own textbooks or the textbooks of their friends in order to reap the benefits from this corrupt industry. A handful of students have sued universities in the last few years, demanding the option to study for an affordable price, but these cases are still working their way through the court system. In the meantime, many students are turning to downloading free PDF textbooks online in an effort to get through college without massive debt. Apple is the second most valuable company in the world, and though several other competitors offer similar products, none come close to their market capitalization. That's because Apple has a series of stringent policies meant to wring every last cent from their customers. The first is the massive overpricing of their products. When accounting for costs, Apple charges as much as 800% more for their products than for the cost of parts, labor, transportation, and marketing. And then there's the issue of accessories. Apple makes their products incompatible with other charges and add-ons, meaning you need to buy their overpriced gadgets. Lastly is a phenomenon called planned obsolescence. Apple has admitted to hardwiring their products to lose battery life and malfunction after only a few years. This creates the illusion that your device is failing, forcing users to buy a new product, thus boosting their astronomical profits. It's easy to sympathize with the Starbucks customer who is suing the coffee giant for providing too little Java in its Grande, Venti, Trenta, and tall iced coffees. After doing the math on iced coffees, studies revealing that a 12-ounce cup of the cold version should be a dollar less than the hot version. That's because the ice in Frappuccinos, which is virtually free, displaces much of the coffee and other ingredients, which are actually expensive. Of course, the courts ruled that this was not illegal, but that doesn't mean it isn't unfair. Many customers are willing to pay more for their coffee in order to guarantee that farmers are making a living wage and beans are collected in a sustainable way. But that is simply not the case for Starbucks and other corporate coffee behemoths. The next time you watch an infomercial, read an advertisement, or spot a new supplement reporting miraculous weight loss results, be wary that the company behind it may not have your best interest in mind. When evaluating claims for weight loss products, the Federal Commission recommends a healthy portion of skepticism. Most don't come close to fulfilling their claims. And in the rare cases where a product might result in some temporary weight loss, it's almost never a permanent solution and is usually unsafe. There is no known diet regimen that makes people skinny with no exercise or dietary changes. So any company purporting to have these qualities is lying. And it gets worse. More than 50% of diets studied were actually harmful to participants. The glasses and contact industry in the United States is considered a scam by many consumers. Here's how it works. In the US, contact lenses are regulated. No matter how old you are or how long it's been since your vision has changed, you need a doctor's prescription less than one year old to be able to order contacts. But in reality, consumers need to check their prescription much less frequently, and this only leads to a multi-hundred dollar fee for the optometrist and the glasses manufacturer. And the frames are massively overpriced as well. According to an industry insider, you can get amazingly good frames with Warby Parker level of quality for $4 to $8. For $15, you can get designer quality frames like what you'd get from Prada. 
Act is a popular brand of mouthwash that was once owned by pharmaceutical behemoth Johnson & Johnson, but split off recently. Many customers were fooled by their recent promotional campaign in which they offered a bottle of mouthwash that was almost double the size as the original bottle for an almost identical price. The only issue? The larger bottle had half the amount of the active ingredient, fluoride, meaning that the larger bottle was actually much less effective even for the same price. This technique is carried out across many medicines and cosmetics, so be sure to check the concentration of active ingredient found in your favorite products. The truth is that for years, toilet paper manufacturers have been selling less product and masking the shrinkage with hyperbole and hard-to-quantify claims. According to John T. Gerville, a marketing professor at Harvard Business School, they get away with it because consumers have a better grasp of how much an item costs than they do of the size it should be. They have in their minds that this toilet paper costs 79 cents and that one costs 89 cents, he explains. They're not taking into account that one has fewer sheets. In fact, the average toilet paper manufacturer reduced the number of sheets in their rolls by a margin of 15%, sometimes inflating the price in the process. It's been estimated that movie theatres make an 85% profit at the concession stand on overpriced soda, candy, nachos, hot dogs, and, of course, popcorn. Movie theatre popcorn has been called one of America's biggest rip-offs, with a retail price of nine times what it costs to make. In 2012, after a Michigan man sued a movie theatre for overcharging customers on snacks, one theatre owner spoke up in defense of charging $8 for a Coke and a box of goobers. The majority of the price charged for a movie ticket, he explains, goes to the studios and distribution companies, not the theatre. Theatres, it's been said, are really in the popcorn and candy business. Business. The showing of films is just an excuse to gather a crowd and try to sell them buttery snacks and sugary drinks. Reuters is reporting that many of America's major brands have been quietly tweaking their coffee blends. While most coffee companies consider their blends trade secrets and are loath to disclose exactly what goes into them, both circumstantial and direct evidence suggests they're now substituting lower-grade Robusta beans for some of their pricier Arabica and degrading the quality of our coffee. Last year, a shortage of Arabica caused prices of the premium bean to spike as high as $3 a pound, $2 more than what a pound of Robusta would cost. This compares to a five-year historical trend of Arabica costing closer to 70 cents more than Robusta. In recent weeks, the trend has reversed, with Arabica prices falling to just a 62 cent premium over Robusta. Anyone who regularly purchases bagged snacks knows what it's like to be woefully disappointed after popping open a bag and finding it half or even a third full. Now, a new study from Kitchen Cabinet Kings has busted open which brands have the most air in their bags and also shed some light on why all the extra space is necessary. The process of filling bags with nitrogen even has a name. It's called slack fill. While this benign practice fills the bag, it also leaves stomachs empty and hungry shoppers disappointed. And the results of the study? Cheetos, Ruffles and Stacey's Pita Chips had a larger air-to-snack ratio than other brands, meaning you might not be getting as much bang for your buck. According to the study, a bag of Cheetos is 41% snack and 59% taste-preserving air. Ruffles and Stacey's just broke even, measuring half air, half chip. <laughs> 